Imagine a cozy spot right here in Charleston where you can sip cocktails, enjoy great food, and let top tier comedians handle the rest. Let's welcome the mind behind the laughs, Josh Bates, co-owner of Wits End Comedy Club and Lounge. Josh, great to have you here with us today. Thank you so much. So, to my understanding, this is the first dedicated stand-up comedy lounge in the Lowcountry ever. Yeah, I mean, even uh, going back 35, 40 years, uh, there's been a ton of places that have done it in breweries and bars, but the first truly dedicated stand-up comedy club. Yeah. Wow, and I'm sure that plays into the inspiration of you wanting to open this, but talk to me about some of, some of your other inspiration. Sure, um, so I'm a stand-up com comedian myself. Uh, I've been doing it about six, seven years. And uh, one day I was like, you know, why don't I just do this? Why don't I just open a club here? Um, and because we don't have one in the area, it only made sense. Do a lot of comedy clubs, are they owned by comedians? No, usually not. Uh, most of them aren't independent, so they're normally owned by large companies. Um, and only a few, you know, pretty famous clubs are owned by comedians. Uh, but it's pretty unusual. Yeah. yeah. And I need to hear the story behind the name Wits End. Where sure. did that come from? Yeah, Wits End. So uh, we came out with a bunch of different names and we didn't want it to be cheesy like, you know, the, the Chuckle Hut or, you know, the Funny Tickle or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Um, so we came up with this concept of uh, Wit is an actual little jester mm -hmm. and uh, this is where he has gone to finish his career. So he's it's his end, yeah. so a little play on words, but um, yeah, when you're at your wit's end, come to the club, yeah. is kind of our idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is obviously a unique entertainment experience in the Lowcountry, there aren't any other of them, but sure. what are some of the unique experiences offered at wit's end? Sure, so um, besides just our programming of, you know, not only open mics, uh, improv, national headliners, um, we're also a full-time, you know, bar slash restaurant. So upstairs we have a, a full arcade, uh, pinball machines, pool tables. Um, so it's still a really good hang even when we don't have a show going on. Yeah. So it's pretty unique. And you mentioned open mics and national talent. Mm -hmm. So you're really kind of combining the yeah. on the local and national level. Tell me more about that. Sure, so uh, w the thing from day one was we didn't want to be a venue that just hosted national acts. Mm -hmm. We really see a huge talent pool, uh, not only in Charleston, but in the region, and we wanted to highlight that. Um, so not only do we do open mics and local showcases, but we really try to ensure that we have our local comedians mm -hmm. on those headliner shows to give them uh, a little bit of visibility, you know, to start touring as well. So, yeah. yeah, and and Josh, I, I think a lot of us don't understand how truly hard this profession is. So sure. giving the opportunity for local talent to get on these shows with national headliners, yeah. I mean, really, how hard is it to to become a stand-up comedian? Sure. So uh, on. The last time I think someone actually uh, did the numbers, there's over 100,000 people that do stand-up or some type of comedy in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as people that make it, that number is very, very small. So uh, usually it takes years and years. Uh, the normal average for a, let's say, a comedy seller comic in New York City, they've been doing it for at least 15 years before they even get that chance. Wow. Um, so. It, it is it is very difficult. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know going there and, and and knowing that that's the backstory of this that there's that platform for the amazing talent that we have here locally in Charleston. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you mentioned the full kitchen and bar. You also have a Sunday supper series, right? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that we wanted to do for the community in that area is provide uh, a lot of local chefs mm -hmm. an opportunity to just take over our kitchen and make what they make. Um, so every Sunday we have everything from oysters to barbecue to empanadas. Mm. Uh, so it, it's been well received in the community and we're always busy on those days. I can't think of a better place for that than here in Charleston. Yeah, exactly. Foodie city, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so obviously I'm sure you have events all the time. Is there any day you're not open? Uh, the only day we're not open is Tuesdays. So we try to let everyone know that when there's not a show going on or an open mic going on, we are a fully operational bar and lounge. Mm -hmm. um, so please come out, hang out. The comics are there. It's, it's a very neat experience to see comics in the, in the side corner, you know, telling jokes and writing jokes. 
Um, but it's just a fun hang. Yeah. yeah, and open mics are Monday and Wednesdays, right? Every Monday and Wednesday, we, we have them. So uh, if you want to try out, you've always thought about doing it, it's the perfect place to Now's do that. Now's your chance. Now's, Now's your, chance. your chance. Yeah. Josh, thank you so much for being here. And witsandcharleston.com is where we can go to learn more information. All your tickets, all the information, FAQs, it's all there. You can't miss it. Wonderful. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're back after this.